Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial about Neo Smart Economy and how to use Java to develop smart contracts. So Neo is um, a very special platform that has uh, recently rebranded to the name Neo um, from Ant Shares, uh, which is the name it was used when it was founded. And one of the cool things about Neo is that you can use the languages that you know and love to write smart contracts. Um, they then get compiled down. Um, into AVM, which is AntShares Virtual Machine Code, which is like Java bytecode or all the, you know, kind of runtime instructions that the machines can use. And then these can get, get executed on the Neo uh, platform. So what's cool is that the, the Neo guys have been working on compilers to take different languages like Java, C Sharp, um, Kotlin, JavaScript, Python, and convert them down. Um, so this is still very very new and, and people exploring it at the moment. C Sharp is the, the language of choice just because that's where most of the work has been done. But the other languages are following fast. So I expect by the end of 2017 that we'll be seeing a lot of uh, smart contract examples and, and working uh, prototypes in different languages, which is very exciting and, and a big advantage over Ethereum and other smart contract platforms. So I'm going to be following the guide that you can find by going to document.docs.neo.org. Um, I'm going to do the English one, obviously, and going to smart contract and then getting started Java. Um, and basically all you need to do is follow these instructions, but to make it as simple as possible, I'm just going to take you through very quickly. So um, the first thing is to install and download <coughs> Visual Studio 2017, really easy. Um, we need this just because at the moment, the compiler needs to be um, compiled in, in C Sharp and there's not a release version yet. So it, it's, it's not, a big, not a big deal. You don't need to have that much experience in Visual Studio 2017. Um, it should all feel fairly familiar anyway. Download it, it's free software. Make sure you um, add in the .NET cross-platform development add-on at the time of installation, um, which is just over here, and install it. Okay, so once you've installed Microsoft Visual Studio, it's now time to download and compile the Neo compiler. So in the instruction guide, go through and click on this link, Neo compiler, which will take you to the Neo project, Neo compiler, which is in GitHub. And you can, uh, the best thing to do is just to download the whole thing, um, clone download and, and open in desktop. Um, but you're really focused on Neo J, which is the Java compiler for Neo. So go into Visual Studio, file, open, solution, and then go find that in your, in your directory. And it'll open up this, which is Neo A, Neo J, Neo M. And you can have a look here if you're interested. And essentially it's a whole bunch of C sharp code, which um, is able to convert Java bytecode into AVM. So you can right click here and you go and publish this because you'll now need an executable that you can run, which is essentially your compiler. So go click on publish um, and just make sure it's got these settings roughly, which is uh, it's release candidate. And this is the location where um, your AXE is going to be or whatever your ex executable is. And you just want to make sure that the target framework is the net core app, which is .NET for apps. And your runtime will be the runtime for your machine. Uh, and then click on publish. It will then go away and do its work, start loading. Doesn't take that long at all. Um, just takes a few seconds. And then it succeeded, which is great. And all you need to do is you need to add the folder where this is to your um, path in your system variables, which will allow you to essentially call that executable without having to specify exactly where it is every single time. So you click in, copy that, go into system, which you can do by clicking uh, Windows, typing in system, and then go to advanced system settings and environment variables. And here on path, you then want to go to edit that and edit a new one, create a new one, and just paste that in. Once you've now built Neo J, it's time to write some Java code. So this is the fun bit, and uh, hopefully everyone's been waiting for this bit. 
So open up your favorite IDE. I've gone for IntelliJ IDEA and uh, create a new project. Simple as you don't need anything special about this. Um, just use the latest version of the SDK, which is you know 1.8 at the time of recording this video. Um, no templates needed. Um, call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it Neo Java. Um, click on finish. IntelliJ will will do its thing. And then in source, let's create a Java class and call it. Hello world. Get rid of these comments. And okay, here's what we need to do. We now need to import the jar file, which is the Neo framework. And this Neo framework essentially gives you all the methods that you need to call. Um, and it's actually in the NeoJ project. It comes inside that. So if you go to right click on the Neo Java project and go to open module settings, and go to libraries, you can then press add Java. And if you go and find it, which is in Neo compiler, Neo J, and shares dot smart contract dot framework dot jar and click OK and add it in. And you'll now see it inside external libraries here. So go ahead and we can import this. So if you go to import and shares, it's called and shares. It might change it back to Neo or whatever, but that answers the old name for Neo smart contract framework and we're going to import function code and all neo um, java classes need to either extend function code or verification code you can read about more in the docs but essentially a smart contract can either be something that runs functions or it can be something that verifies that the calling um, address has the right to do something so in our case you know we're not worried about that we just want to uh, write some functions. So which is extend function code here. See how easy it is now that you've got a jar file. It essentially comes up in the intelligent prompt. Um, I'm going to create our first method. Now um, we're going to have it return a byte array um, and I'll explain later. Uh, we need to call it main. Now the key thing is that main needs to have a capital M in it. If it doesn't have capital M, it isn't going to work, and the compiler will not be able to figure out which is the first method. So that's what you need to do to make this work. Um, in terms of parameters, we don't need any parameters for now. We're just doing hello world to ignore that. Um, and let's create our function. So we're going to do storage, which is part of ant shares. Click on that, and it will go in automatically import it, which is great. And we're going to put into storage storage dot get current context and we're going to put a key here and uh, the key is just going to be secret and the message is going to be hello world and now we're just going to return back storage dot get storage dot get current context and just a key again so we're going to put into storage um Hello world is the answer to secret. And then we're just going to return back whatever's inside secret inside the storage. Now, the reason why we need to return a byte array rather than um, the string is because when you actually call the storage.put function, which can have a, have a string here, it actually stores it inside storage as a byte array. So when you try and get it out with the get function, with the get call, it's just going to come back with a byte array. Now, luckily, this byte array is fairly easy to understand and and you'll see that you can just interpret that as a string um, so it's, it's, it's not a problem to and strings and byte arrays are fairly interchangeable in terms of the way that the Anchez virtual machine operates um, and you're good to go save that and press build Once that's compiled, um, you just go into out and you'll notice that you've now got this out folder with production Neo Java and hello world dot class. And if you double click on that, you can see the decompiled version of your compiled class file, which should look like exactly what you typed, which means that everything is is good to go. OK, once you've written your Java code and you've compiled it into a dot class file, it's now time to use your NeoJ compiler to convert that class file into an AVM file, which you can then run on the blockchain. So 
um, go ahead and, and, and pull up command prompt and we'll need to switch into the new folder um, which is where you've got your class file and it's just called neoj.exe remember you can do this because you've added it to the path file so neoj.exe is a known um, executable to the machine and then um, and then run it on hello world.class give it a few seconds So what it's doing is it's taking the Java bytecode and it's it's going through it and it's converting it into this AVM bytecode. Um, and so I'll just run through what this output is because it's quite useful to understand. So the first thing is just telling you that it's the, the Neo compiler for Java Virtual Machine version 2.0.1.0 and that it's running it on this main method um, in the Hello World class. And you'll notice this quite a lot here, which for English speakers, it looks like loads of question marks. So if you go and copy that and you go into translate and you put that in here, it will translate it for you into Chinese and it'll say find the function entry point, which, is, which all that means is that this is the entry point for, um, you know, for your function code. Um, convert suck, suck to me success. This conversion has been success. It's written hello world.avm and um, the output is success. So everything's good. Uh, don't have to worry about it. Um, now, if you do write your own Java code, you might have some compilation issues and the error usually is just a stack trace. But sometimes it will have a specific error and that might be like that in Chinese. Just take that, right click, copy it and then put it into Google Translate and you will be able to figure out what is wrong. So once you've um, now got your hello world.avm file, which is in the same folder as um, your class file. So if you go in here to GitHub to your Neo Java out, it's now here. Okay, once you've uh, compiled your AVM code, you are ready to deploy your smart contract. So you need to go and download the Neo GUI, um, which will essentially build a node on your computer, which will allow you to download the blockchain and invoke and deploy smart contracts. So there is one in the Neo project and it's fine and it's the main one, it's easy to use. However, if you are developing, you'll want to use the City of Zion COS Neo GUI developer. The reason for that is it has some extra features. Namely, it allows you to see return values, which is really important and log out runtime events. Um, there's a bunch of really smart developers that have been adding extra features here. So I suggest that people focus on downloading this Neo GUI developer. So you just clone and download it. It's a Visual Studio C Sharp um, project essentially, and you can build that and, and run it. Now, when you run it, it'll look like this. It's running on the test net. So one tip that's really important is if you go inside the Neo GUI developer, Neo GUI, there are two files here, config.json and protocol.json. And you've got equivalent files for mainnet and testnet, mainnet and testnet. And by default, the developer version will be defaulted to the testnet. So the config file and a protocol file will be the same as the testnet equivalent. Whereas in the Neo GUI, the one you get on the Neo project, GitHub, it will be the mainnet one. And so if you are going to use the, the original Neo GUI, make sure that you um, take the code in the testnet file and copy it over into the config one. And similarly for protocol, otherwise you'll log into the, the mainnet, which will cost you loads of money to do anything. And also the mainnet isn't ready for um, the next version of smart contracts yet. So the best is to use the testnet. So once you load it up, it will then have to download all of these blocks. So as of um, 3rd of September 2017, that's 483,439 blocks. And unfortunately, you're just going to have to wait. Uh, it's a good time to go get to, go to the pub, or get some food, have a snack. Depends on how your internet, you might have to wait a few hours. Um, and you just create a wallet, go to the new wallet database, and that'll give you a standard account. And you just got to wait for it to download. Um, Unfortunately, there's nothing else I can 
can say or do. You just have to wait. Um, but whilst you're doing that, you've got an address here. And what you want to do is you want to go to the Neo Slack um, and ask them, ask a developer if they can give you some Neo gas on a testnet and give them your address. And you go here, right click, view private key, um, and then you can tell them whatever, whatever they need to know. You don't need to give them your private key. You might just need to give them your public key um, in a different format and should be good to go. You will need 490 gas, 490. Without that, you can't actually deploy your smart contract. So you're out of luck. If you do have the Neo gas though, you're good to go. And um, it costs you one gas every time you want to invoke a method on your smart contract. Um, however, if you just want to test method calls, you can do that locally once you've deployed the smart contract and that doesn't cost you anything. Um, so you just, you just need at least 490 gas and you're good to go. Okay. So assuming that you've now got your gas and you're good to go, you go to advanced deploy contract and you need to load in your file. So go to the, your out production Neo Java file and you have the hello world AVM, which you generated before. Double click that and you can load that. Now you need storage because you're using the storage.get and storage.put. And before you can deploy it, you need to add a whole bunch of extra things. So name, uh, my name, the name actually you should use the, you know, what, what it is that it does. So hello world, 2001, one, author, me, email address, me. Um, these, these folders, these uh, fields all need to be non-blank. So and you need a parameter list and a return type. So for strings and byte arrays, it's just 05. Um, and if, if you go into the docs and you go to tutorial, return, smart contract parameters and return values, this one here, it actually tells you what they are. So byte arrays five, same as string integers two, booleans are one, and it's two um, digits, two characters, so 02 or 01 or whatever, and return 01 or 02, whatever. So in this case, we're putting a string array in, we're getting a, uh, a byte array back, it's 0505. And then um, we press deploy, and that will give us a script hash, um, which is essentially the the address which you can then call if you want to run that function. So, um, and then you can press test and it will say 490 gas. Now I've actually used up all my gas. So rather than uh, invoking this, which will um, deploy it into the, the network, I'm just going to pull up one that I've, I've got earlier. So, and this one's actually something that I wrote in Kotlin, which is another language, but it compiles to Java and it has the same exact same AVM code as the one you've seen before, except that I've changed the hello world a bit just for a bit of a variety. So it takes as a, a parameter a byte array. So in this case, it doesn't really matter because we don't do anything with it, but I'm just going to put anything. And I'm just going to convert that to hex so that it can update. And then that's the, that's kind of the parameter for the argument. And if you have more parameters, you can also add them in here, but in this case, you don't need to. And then because it's already deployed and I said you could test things locally for free, if I just press test, it will now execute that smart contract locally on my machine because on my machine, I've downloaded that script. It's got a specific set of steps to run. Um, it's .avm file. So the, the computer actually can just execute that on your behalf. It doesn't publish anything to the blockchain. It doesn't make any changes to the storage. But what it does is locally runs it um, as a test and, and, and it comes back. So what comes back is hello world, which is what I've written in, in my version of the Kotlin file. Um, and there you have it. You've now deployed a smart contract and you could do, well, the world's your oyster. So have fun and, um, let me know if there's any feedback on how we can improve the documentation and videos. Thanks. Bye.